are you doing, man? Outlaw Moon's not gonna like it if you make a big mess. Outlaw Moon Games and Toys, nestled here in the heart of Austin, Texas, is gonna be just fine with my shenanigans. Oh, okay. What, can you not help yourself? What's going on, man? I've always been a cat person. You know that, Jim? Cat person? Pruitt, we talked about this. They're called Tabaxi. Okay. <laughs> Tabaxi on WebDM. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the Final Upstart Dice Kickstarter by Legendary Pants. These dice are awesome for any game, but they're perfect for your modern cyberpunk, sci-fi, or intrigue campaigns. These are 100% unique. All four colors have exclusive numbering. And the CSI are the only dice with reactive numbers that glow under ultraviolet light. Nothing else like them in the world. So check them out. These dice can be in your bag by August 2019. Link here and in the description. Cats. Cat. And the people thereof. Got people. Tabaxi Jim Davis. I mean, like a lot of the player race shows, we get a lot of requests for mm -hmm. dive into this. Yeah. You know, what do you think about it? Give us a breakdown. And Tabaxi is one of those that when it came out, when Volos first came out, everyone was on it about the Tabaxi, it seemed like. Everybody was like, oh my God, you can't play, you know, this is OP, and yeah. have you seen this, you know, yeah. thing? And yeah. yet, like, a year later, whatever long the it's game's been, still Volos, here. Everybody, game's still here, the world's still around, <laughs> Nobody, you know, your books didn't combust in the flames, your dice didn't melt, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe your game group is still here, hopefully. It's a player race that I, I'm eager to kind of talk about because I don't think it was as um, over the top, as people thought it was initially. It's tightly focused and, and, a, and a mechanically speaking at least, really uh, yeah. supports certain archetypes. And it can bolster uh, other archetypes that maybe uh, need a little bit of help. Sure, yeah, there's um, a lot here for, for, for most classes, really. But like most things, um, it's, it's all about your concept. Sure, right? yeah, yeah. So it's how you want to look at it. And to do that, I think first we have to look at the cats themselves. The what cats kind of cat are you trying to emulate? For right. one, right. There's a difference between like a house cat, there's lynx, you know, there are the big cats of the <laughs> wild. And, and and while they do uh, have a pretty uh, similar way of being, yeah. there are some uh, some intricacies that uh, you can delve into. You really you can. Intricacies. You really can, you really can. So like baseline lore for Tabaxi is that they're from this region, the Forgotten Realms, known as the Mazteca, but then there's also another group of Tabaxi in the mm -hmm. Forgotten Realms that are also cat people. So there's some confusion there. They first appeared in Fiend Folio back uh, in the early 80s and they're like looking at them way back they seem to be more like villainous and they're there for like to fulfill that uh, evil or at least aggressive uh, humanoid role when yeah. you're in a jungle instead of the forest kind of thing so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like that they've evolved to flash and, their ass at the party <laughs> <laughs> right. I like that they've evolved and changed and, and moved beyond that that sort of like they're evil jungle cat people or like you know wicked <laughs> in, in, in some way it seems like they're really leaning into like the house cat Angle oh, yeah. of it, right? Uh, it, particularly the ride up in Volos, it, it, it certainly seems like you're that you're encouraged to play that quirky, weird, sort of obsessive type mm -hmm. uh, feline archetype and approach it from that perspective. But I think there's a lot of territory there that you could cover. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but conceptually. I do, but I do kind of like the whole the two those two charts at the beginning, the oh, obsessions yeah. and the quirks. Yeah. Because I mean, cat, you know, a cat can have like a favorite <laughs> toy, or they have their favorite place they like to nap, or their favorite. <laughs> Thing they like to yeah. do, but it'll uh, change. But it's it'll the, change. Right. It'll change. And then the quirks. I mean, you know, it's just staring at the wall, seeing <laughs> ghosts, man. Why does that Tabaxi always chase his own tail? Right, right, right. Like or what still, is it just like staring yeah. at the grass, mm -hmm. like looking at bugs and things? So I think like that's a good place to start with it, right? Like, how do you want to portray this feline humanoid? You're really leaning into the the kind of the I don't know what you'd call them, the stereotypes of cats. I nap all day. I'm kind of mischievous. I'm secretly the master of this place, or act like it. Your effect is fickle, yeah. your attention is fickle, what you are into changes all the time. Like, I think that that works as a starting point for the Tabaxi, but I like looking at them as more generic and more of a, a template to project like other archetypes onto. So there's like the stealthy predator. Uh, the big cats are where I really look to for inspiration for Tabaxi, like mm -hmm. a jaguar is this stealthy, rippling, muscled, 
kind of uh, predator, right? Like you don't want to mess with them. Same with tiger or lion. Like yeah. drawing inspiration from that as opposed to the more cutesy cheetah sort of is the obvious one because of their speed burst. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Um, you can look at other big cats as the inspiration because I like the idea of like a feline warrior with just a big weapon and, and maybe some, you know, piecemeal armor or something. Kind of like really lean into the, uh, <laughs> the lion-o Thundercats angle there. And you're, you're a mighty warrior and, and uh, use your feline agility and, and grace to make yourself a better combatant. Yeah. Not necessarily an assassin or a, you know, yeah, sneaky you, rogue or something like that. Yeah, you're really good at getting in and on them. It emulates that pounce. It the, emulates that of, pounce thing, yeah. That, that cats have. Yeah, um, yeah, that burst you're gonna get there. And so I, I like that angle too, like the, the big, strong feline humanoid as opposed to the slinky, stealthy, sort of dexterous. And, and mechanically, speaking I think that even though they don't say have a bonus to strength you can still kind of play with that and swim in that conceptual water to uh, to come up with something really fun you know when we were talking about the show you mentioned something maybe reskinning or using some abilities from like bugbear oh yeah because yeah when you look at bugbear mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. like if you really just thought about it like imagine if that's just a strong cat yeah I mean I really do think so like yeah. if, you're, if you're talking about mixing and matching things or um, you know a lot of tables you can approach the DM and just say like hey I like this part of the race but I want to change something about it or alter it you can usually negotiate something there where a, a slight modification will help you fit the concept that you're going for to me that's always what I I like. I like mechanical support for a concept that helps me get into character, that helps me find um, an angle to approach the character that's interesting for me, that I'm going to want to play through multiple mm -hmm. sessions. It's easy to come up with a character I want to play once, but for a character I want to stick with and not always go like, well, all right, second session, time for my second character. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Good Which I have done before. <laughs> the revolving old revolving door. door. What are some other sort of uh, concepts that you're... Uh, that are on your mind. Well, here's the thing. Again, observing cats as they are. What are cats? Cats are noble. They're mm. majestic. At okay. least that's how they see themselves. All right, okay. Right? All right, I understand so that's what they want you to think. That's Continue. what they want right, to okay. think, and that's what they want to portray. <laughs> so, I mean, I could even see, like, your Tavoxi being, like, a noble background. Yeah. Something like that. And they are full of grace, of course. Yeah. But never forget that when they fail, it should be momentous. <laughs> now, this isn't the you roll a one and just catastrophe happens, but... Right. I think that for a Deboxi, they need to at least fall and everyone needs to see it. Right, it needs to be like a big thing. Uh, because yeah. there's nothing better than when a cat just doesn't make that jump and then looks around like, what? Uh, is that me? Anybody see that? Is that me? You know, it's like, yeah, that was you, asshole. Um, sorry. I, being a cat person, it's yeah. just uh, I think about this just a something lot. Just that something that you observe. Like, yeah. um, but yes, like having that, like a, like a bard um, yeah. that goes out to sing their tail. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. You could do uh, the the trickster cat. Right. Imagine like an arcane trickster using their little mage hand to like knock shit over, <laughs> like, take, <laughs> taking things and, and secreting them away. Well, there's a lot of synergy there, right? Like uh -huh. there's uh, using stealth magic to enhance your already uh, considerable stealth abilities. Yeah. Leaning into the the house cat uh, sort of angle of it. Maybe like the tabaxi in a in a party is like a, a you know sort of a stray cat where it's like we don't really know where he came from. Did you feed him? Was it you? Like yeah. I, how, where Showed did you come night. from? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I can see that. The, the, to me, when you look at like the the house cat angle for Tabaxi, I see a lot of pitfalls, and I see a lot of places where, you know, you could take something too far and like, annoy other players, and mm -hmm. kind of get like, really, you're not going to help again because you're play you're taking another nap, Mr. Catman. Yeah. Like swiping things and mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know stealing them or knocking them over, just being a general sort of annoying kind of person. It's cute when a tiny cat does it, yeah. but when a giant cat humanoid acts that way, you might feel different. Yeah, when it's supposed to be a fully grown adult in the party and group of friends, then yeah. after a while it's like, Bob, can you please stop? Yeah, can you please stop? Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe that's a part of it, like, right? Like maybe that's something that you want to work into the the group dynamic of your mm -hmm. of your party, and it's okay. You have players who are all right with playing characters that are a bit annoying to each other. But it's <laughs> definitely something you should like work out ahead of time. Like, hey, you know, we could have this dynamic. That way, in play, it's not as just like, oh god. Yeah, you know. but this happens with some of the player races that have, you know, sort of interesting personality quirks. We saw it with like the Kenku. Kinder, of course, are famous for this in, in, mm -hmm. in terms of being like, they've got these personality traits that if you role play them, they're just going to piss off everybody at the table. It's worth having a conversation about. It's worth sitting and talking with the DM and the other players and going like, hey, here's what I'm thinking for this character because... I know that it might have a tendency to annoy others or it might, mm -hmm. there might be something about it that if 
I only do this one thing and I don't portray like a well-rounded three-dimensional character, it might irritate you or something. And I think Tabaxi has that potential because of the mischievous cat-like kind of qualities that it has, you know, that's mm -hmm. associated with it. But do you have to really lean into that as the DM, like that baseline lore of, you know, they're always transient, yeah. uh, they're homeless, they're gonna mm -hmm. just come up, uh, some people, most people don't really like them because it's yeah. like, what are you contributing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm, when I was looking at them and, and looking at the baseline Rhino that, that first caught me is that, so we have a group of people that travel and they're nomadic, they're, mm -hmm. they're out there looking for lore and artifacts and interesting stories and they don't value money. And when I read that, I go, from a world building perspective, that looks like a group of people in your world that are ripe to be picked on and, yeah. and abused. And, well, and it looks like the Federation. You know, right. <laughs> you know, it's just, it just <laughs> explorers and they don't care about money. It's a, it, I, I want something more than that. Number one, there's already multiple sort of archetypes that fill that niche. Mm -hmm. And this is the wandering Roma type, right? They're in colorful wagons and they, they set up shop in the village square and, and put on a show with their traveling acting troupe, whatever. And they may or may not be compelled by their god to go do this as well. Mm -hmm. Yet another D&D &D, uh, power that uh, has exerted an, an undue influence over people that they so and so called created. Um, anyway, that's right. not a whole huge chip on my shoulder or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> it does seem to be the, the bog standard for D&D. It does, right? I mean, it is. It, there's a lot of them that, that have that. So to me, it's like, yeah, maybe there's a group of Tabaxi that travel and move from place to place. And yeah, you could draw inspiration from our own world and look and see those people who are nomadic, who live amongst settled peoples, tend to be mistrusted, tend to be sort of treated with suspicion, if not worse, because a lot of our history, the people that traveled or, or from out of town, you don't know them there's that mistrust of him, like, well, you don't live around here. You don't have a stake in this community. We don't know who you are. Why are you here? What are you doing traveling? You could lean into all of those things. You could use them as inspiration. But you could also say, like, hey, what if it is possible to travel great distances within this, say, fantasy kingdom that we have? Because the commitment to law and order makes traveling safe. And now we've got a group of people who are all these elves and dwarves and tabaxi and kenku and whatever, halflings and all that stuff. And they make use of the peace and stability that this kingdom or empire or whatever is mm -hmm. provided to travel the roads. And now it's possible for people to make a living or, or, or adopt a lifestyle that is no, semi-nomadic without that accompanying sort of mistrust and suspicion yeah. because everybody knows people are traveling, right? Yeah. Like it's just what you do now because the good queen whoever is, you know, keeps the land safe. Exactly, and, and also there's a whole slew of jobs that would arise there. You need road wardens to keep those those lands safe, right, right, and they're right. just, you know, it's the state troopers, right? Yeah. And so your character could be a tabaxi road warden. Yeah, and that's just, constantly wandering. That, and that's your whole job. Patrolling. Like, your literally job is to travel, dispense justice where you see fit, but just, you know, keep moving. Yeah. Or right. messengers. Uh, or like messengers. Pony Express, except the, the Kitty Express. <laughs> the Kitty Express, um, right. Think of, like, scientific research they do on, say, house cats, and when they put like tracking collars on them like where do you go in the day yeah. when we let you out of the house and you see it's like oh it's a, a little circuit yeah it's like three miles right you know? yeah and so like take that and, and extrapolate and be like okay well this wandering troop of tabaxi who uh, are tinkerers and, and sort of petty merchants and they collect stories and whenever they come into town it's like new trinkets new stuff they're there to help you fix things because they've collected all this lore around the kingdom or the countryside they, they just sort of know stuff it's where you get your news and you just no, like, well, you know, springtime is when their wagon comes through this part of the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the kingdom. But like in winter, they, they're here and they just make a circuit around a particular region. And that helps to build, I don't know, trust. It, 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 it kind of like establishes them as a part of the community, even though they do travel. Yeah. And it's a way to kind of keep the wandering nomadic storyteller and merchant feel that Tabaxi have without needing to import all of the, quite frankly, gross injustice and oppression that, that we find in our own world and that a lot of DMs use as inspiration. You just say, hey, well, like, let's flip the script on this and try something different. Okay, you got to um, bring news from afar. I mean, there's no oh, sure. internet. I mean, how else do you expect people to find out? I mean, you have yeah. to welcome some travelers, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just one way. Maybe the Tabaxi have, you know, their own kingdom somewhere, and the ones that you see here are those who are sent out to engage in kind of a cultural exchange program. You treat them not as a, a species and a culture, but they are uplifted felines, each one unique and individual because they're the creation of a wizard or a druid or something like that. 
like that. So Of course, now uh, I just thought of a tabaxi diviner that reads the future in their own hairballs that they hock <laughs> <fuck> up. <laughs> Just gotta <laughs> lean into it, man. It's just over there, like diviners in the getting ready in the morning, learning their spells. Just <laughs> like, oh, is, 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 is are they okay? It's like, oh yeah, don't worry. He's just doing his portents for the morning. And you just and it eats certain hair, it like licks certain pelts uh-huh. when it wants to mm-hmm. cast certain spells. Mm-hmm. Just like, oh, I've got to real, I gotta like really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, you just gotta lean into that, man. What do you do with a tabaxi bezor? <laughs> Jim, what do you do with a tabaxi bezor? I don't know. You open up a portal to the Cat Lord and summon it to you. Oh my god. Uh, anyway, that's... Uh, Travel beyond the spheres. Right, magic uh, hairballs in Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, um, well, so. And also, I, I've done this for another character. It was a human, but uh-huh. it was inspired by a friend's cat who had just passed away, and it did the typical indoor-outdoor cat thing where they just disappear. Yeah. They go on their long walk, their as long I like walk, to right, say, right. like if you're a Judge Dredd fan. Yeah. You just kind of send them out. They're, they're out in the woods dispensing justice until their last day. Yeah. And uh, so I made a character based on that, an old cleric, but imagine an old tabaxi just going on their long walk. It's their long walk, Before right? they go and rejoin the, the great nap in the sky. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, One eye all cloudy. Maybe he doesn't even have his claws anymore because they're right. all just like broken off. Uh-huh, and, but, mangy fur. You know, yeah. It's just, but, but damn it, it can still move. It can still move. Like <laughs> you, can that. He, you can hear his bones <laughs> cracking, but you know. To me, like, Monk gets paired with Tabaxi a lot. Oh, God. And I, you can see them as the graceful kung fu, right? But to me, I'm like, no, that mine's a back alley street fighter. My, this is the stray cat. Cutting <laughs> tendons. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's covered in scars and it's just mangy yellow and white. Mm-hmm. Just a beast of a cat uh, that growls all over the uh, back alleys of you know, Waterdeep or Greyhawk or whatever yeah. city that they're in. Uh, yeah, and be careful when you get the milk in them. That's one thing that uh, I think Tabaxi should get drunk off of milk. Get like, drunk off of milk. Get that milk drunk. Oh, oh damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that catnip drunk. There's so much fertile ground here because, I mean, first off, pick your favorite cat meme and make a character based on that. Like Boat up cat. Uh, boat up cat, angry cat, your Tabaxi <laughs> barbarian. There's so much inspiration here, right? There's the Torrens, which were a third edition, a Leonid type uh, uh, cat race from uh, Arcana Evolved, I think. Magic the Gathering has yeah. their own different cat species, the Nakatl, Lemon, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. Uh, of course, you know, the obvious. The obvious one that everybody talks about. Mm-hmm. The, Get your Sword of Omens out. Oh, I was going to mention Kaj- uh, Khajiit, but you're oh, talking about Thundercats. Oh, I was talking about Thundercats, but yes, of oh, course. Man, you know. We're so off base. Gosh. Oh, it's all right, we're, man. It's all right. We got to get back in sync. You know. um, <laughs> Khajiit has wares, too. Khajiit does have wares. <laughs> I find that Khajiit have a, they loom large in my uh, portrayal of Tabaxi. And oh, I'm like, no yeah. matter what I do, I will end up just doing my Khajiit voice. Just because it's like, I don't know, I don't like it. It's sort of like Scottish with Scottish accent and dwarves it really <laughs> gets under my skin now mm-hmm. but no i understand it's kind yeah. of like yeah it, it's sort of set skyrim's a big game and a lot of people have that frame of reference for it so I'm still playing it currently <laughs> <laughs> it's going for the long haul <laughs> i'm a i'm a monogamous gamer really got something special settle now. down with the game you know you want to settle down you know get your smithing and enchanting up to 100 you haven't even gotten into the mods yet I mean, so you just I've, only got, I've got two mods later. you know we're just keeping it spicy yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway uh, thundercats though man you get all the different kinds of cats you get all the different kinds of cats you might like make some changes oh, it's instead of dexterity it's strength or we'll let you like swap some features out for other classes to kind of give you a the the sort of cat person that you're looking for and i think my favorite portrayal of cat people has got to be from quest for glory which is the kata and they're these like desert cat people they dress in sort of like silks and and other kind of finery and when you first meet them it's this like couple of them in this far frozen world these are like desert cats used to the warmth and dryness, uh, mm-hmm. and here they are, you know, in a frozen forest, <laughs> and you, you know, you can help them and sort of win their trust. We could spend the rest of the episode talking about different kind of cat people from from fiction you can base it on. But what about these uh, mechanics that they have? Well, I mean, think? like we talked about at the beginning of the show, it's pretty focused. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's an awesome set of abilities. Any dexterity bonus. Yeah. For fifth edition, for its faults. You get a dexterity bonus. You're, you're going to be. Uh, I mean, it, you're going to be a winner. There's more. Yeah, it seems like there are way more concepts that work mechanically with dexterity than there yeah. are, say, strength-based concepts. When you talk about that, you know, the merits of strength versus dexterity. Sir. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you when you talk about bang for your buck, you know, it's like just give give strength a couple more skills, maybe. <laughs> uh, but whatever. Else. You're getting a vision boost. You're getting a mo- uh, mobility boost. 
you're getting an attack bo boost and a skill boost. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's yeah. that's rough to pass up. Um, it's really easy to shit on because you know all oh, these are just just power gamers that are gonna do what. Sure, sure. Well, sure. no, it could be just cat lovers. Uh, <laughs> I think that people that don't like the debauchery, they're just the dog people of the world, and that's fine. Well, for one, there needs to be a dog person. We need good boys. Race. There need good boys. There needs to be good boys and good girls. There needs to be lemming, snoots booped. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's all right that the cat people will get their stuff first. I'm willing to wait yeah. on the canine person. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll happen. People don't like seeing stuff happen to dogs. That suggests that, would... that they don't mind seeing cats brutally mutilated and oh. burned through magic. Just saying. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Pruitt had John, John Wick didn't, didn't get a, a cat. He got a dog. He okay? did get a dog. John and Wick look at what dog. happened. Yeah. So dark vision, obviously, that's a no-brainer sure. for cats. Now, get to the big one that people... Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. That feline agility. Yep. Double move, which, of course, that's why you want to go monk. And you want to sure. go ahead and take the mobility feat. Yeah, that, that, you don't have to do that. It doesn't. It? First off, the fact that it doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to use your bonus action. You don't mm -hmm. have to use something. It's just like I double my speed, and then I, I, in order to reset it, I need to spin around, not moving at all. The fact that it doesn't cost anything and it, and it synergizes so well with those classes that do have considerable bursts to speed, like monk, like rogue. You're really like doubling down. And D and D has always been a game that overvalues specialization. Uh, yes. Right. It's always been one of those games where, b because it's a party-based game, there's different roles to fulfill in the party. If you double down on a specialty, if you're like, listen, I don't want to do the little bit of everything, dabble and stuff, you can do that. Fifth edition is very friendly for it, as opposed to, say, other editions of D&D. But like almost every version of this game that's been out, if you just like say, this is my shtick, I'm going to just do everything I can to to make it work, you will come up with a character most likely that's you know pretty effective in play. And so it holds the same for like monks and rogues that are tabaxi because there's so much synergy there with the abilities. And feline agility is, is one of those that, that you see get talked about a lot because of the burst of speed of it. But again, I think it's an accurate reflection of the sure. animal that it's based off of. Sure. Uh, just and a quick burst. How many times you see like a cat just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just every, like every dart day, somewhere. Every and day, then, about a hundred times a day. And they look around. And they look around. And they hold on for a second. And, and then, then they take off, off and they yeah. go off again. I mean, so, it's, it's, <laughs> it's pretty fucking accurate. Um, to continue the mobility and segue into the attack with those claws. Right, right. You're getting that 20 foot climb speed mm -hmm. and a D4 unarmed attack. R slashing damage slashing as well. Slashing damage not also. Right. That's kind of nice for uh, monks, gives them an option for their unarmed attack. Climb speed is just a, a, a nice thing to have, right? Like, especially from f starting at first level, because if you think about sort of the progression of mobility abilities in Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. it usually goes like, well, you're just walking. And then you get some sort of boost to climbing and swimming, and then maybe there's a fly, and then the pinnacle of that, before Misty Step at least, was teleportation. So I kind of see those things as benchmarks for a DD and d character. Can my D&D &D character climb without having to make a roll? Can they swim without having to make a roll? Can they fly? Can they overcome vertical obstacles easily? A climb speed is useful for just about anyone, especially useful for those classes that really benefit from the Tabaxi abilities. And it's just like reinforces that idea that this is a, a race option that's really meant for these kinds of characters, these stealthy, subtle characters that mm -hmm. sneak around. But like I said, it's also useful for just about anybody else. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> which makes it giving, such a strong so, option. Giving it right. a giving a solid like melee attack to yeah. like sorcerers, sure. like like a warlock. Mm -hmm. Those are charisma based characters anyway, and you're. You get a little bit of bump to charisma, sure. So there's some good synergy there, but just just getting that one like slash, just a little uh, slash, and, and throwing some. I'm sorry, but you throw some green flame blade or green flame claws, sure, sure, uh, on that. Why not? Why not? I mean, if you've got <laughs> it, if you're not like say a hex blade, I could see Tabaxi hex blade being really fun to play. They have like a ball right. of yarn that, that calls to them. <laughs> that calls to them. Uh, right, like just it, it, there's a lot of synergy there with uh -huh. the fact that you basically got a dex charisma build the fact that you've got all these other things on top of it that work really well you've got a, a, an attack that's always for a reason you are disarmed you don't have anything you have you have that natural attack but it's first of it fits you can mm -hmm. kind of see like you could do a lion o type as a hex blade that that sort of like this is my sword that changes and grows particularly if you take pack of the blade oh dude as it's, your, it's as right your boon right yeah you know? the more i think about it the more i start thinking of different sort of like mechanical mm -hmm. tricks to do um, Land Between Two Rivers has Toonses, the bad luck mage, yes. which is a tabaxi uh, diviner slash lore bard uh, with like Bane and 
uh, all kinds of things to mess with die rolls and just make life like more difficult for the party. Yeah. Uh, he's the one that drives the wagon. I was going to uh, say, <laughs> Tuntus can drive the wagon now? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's great. And then right. it goes careening off the... <laughs> but he's always back. Uh, I have another uh, tabaxi in there uh, called Seize Through Lies. And uh -huh. that, that's a tabaxi bard that is all about detecting lies, detecting falsehoods. Yeah, because cats know. Because the cats know. And so like, yeah, the whole idea there is that they're just... That they stare intently all the time. Mm -hmm. And for that particular NPC, they've got observant alert uh those, those kinds of like vision related abilities that make them so uh, right well i mean uh, to finish off the last couple of uh, abilities that i mean the, the, the cat talents of perception and stealth yeah completely accurate completely accurate uh, and really great proficiencies that fit for a lot of concepts yeah. like it's just a solid <laughs> solid I mean, option because uh, honestly in my opinion perception is like that skill yeah it always has been spotless yeah. and anything like that yeah. um and so consolidating it in fifth edition down to one thing you just want that and you yeah. want some way to get it yeah. you know it's almost always my human skill that mm -hmm, i pick mm -hmm. if you don't otherwise have access to it or you're one of those classes that their skill proficiencies are like really precious you get mm -hmm. two from your background you're two from your class you need those to be certain things so getting perception through something else can often be be really handy so like all of that we've pretty much said it's a solid option for most archetypes for the archetypes that it it sort of like seems it's good for, it's really good for. So how is it not OP? Like I, I just don't think that it is. I don't think I think that just because it's a, just because it has synergy and just because it fits well doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean that it's overpowered. It just means yeah. it works well. Yeah, like, just spreading it out over all pretty much all the aspects of play the way they have is yeah. just like I'm sure that there are other races that have done similar things, but I don't know that have done it this well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, you could see it with the same with like, say, Goliath or Half-Orc. Both of those, for the types of characters that you would that you would want to play with them, they have a lot of features that really work for them, mm -hmm. for the barbarians and sort of frontline fighter types. And it's the same with maybe, say, elves and wizards, right? You get the, yeah. or high elves, at least. Even with those, there's still abilities and things that you get, you're like, oh, I might never use this or whatever, but Tabaxi is a, another matter. You're pretty much gonna use everything Thing pretty much no matter what and, and I honestly I kind of see it's one of those things where like yeah we D and D rewards specialization but because there's so much going on with the tabaxi that doubles up with mm -hmm. what say rogue and monk do rogues and monks are already really fast do they need to double their speed once every other round like do you really need to? and I'm talking more rhetorically I know what you think Pruitt uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, is that, what about those class combos that don't already have something like that? Yeah. And so to me, when I look at a Tabaxi, I go, man, I want to play like a Tabaxi fighter. And even if you, you go like, say, archer, and, and you lean into that, you're more like a mobile skirmisher, yeah. uh, that would fit really well. Being able I, to climb up to places, perches to shoot your, uh, well, your bow I, from. I, dude, I see uh, a battle master. Battle, battle master, master yeah. fighter because when you can double your speed and then you uh, you tack on that maneuver where until the end you add the die roll to your AC. Yeah, yeah. And so it's just like, I'm going to run through this entire group of guys. Mm -hmm. Y'all are going to try to hit me. It ain't going to work. Yeah. And I'm going to kill your leader yeah. before any of you, there. you know, and that's just weaving through. Yeah. You know, you could go more medium armor and take pick up medium armor master so mm -hmm. that you don't necessarily have to have like a crazy high dexterity, but you can still have a high dexterity benefit from that bonus to AC. And not and then you don't have to worry about the penalty to stealth that comes from wearing, say, heavier armor. If you want to make a balanced strength dex character, that's maybe how you go. If you want to go all dex, then you might do light armor or something like that. But there's like just so many different ways to play it. It is what I like about it. It's not necessarily um, pigeonholed into one type of of class or archetype like mm -hmm. some of the races are. Like that's sort of how I see it. Any, like barbarian, anything like that. I mean, a Tabaxi like barbarian. It'd be yeah. pretty sick. Again, we we could keep going on and on uh, oh because boy. pretty much they all they all work. Uh, all a, work. Ta a tabaxi barbarian uh, that doesn't use any weapons but his claws. Yeah. And you know, some people are like, ah, eh, only a D four, and it's like, well, still. That, Listen, still. I, we pl I played in a game where the barbarian only punched people, and they didn't have any. It was like literally like one plus their straight, and that was fine. It was that was yeah, fine. He was just fine. Yeah. Because you would do the things that he did as a tabaxi. Because yeah. he was all about getting people like on the ground and prone. punching them. Helping, and what, yeah, is, keeping what them do cats do? Up. They grapple, and then they start they raking. Get, they got that back kick, yeah. They got that back kick, man. Yeah, that back kick. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... 
and of course, you can never forget the most famous tabaxi of all, in Who's my that? opinion. How's that? The Cowardly Lion from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, God. <laughs> Pull him up. Pull him up. I mean, come on. The, uh, the Ur fantasy setting. <laughs> yes. Uh, why haven't they had released, released the source book already? I don't know who owns Wizard of Oz. Anyway. You damn wizard. Frank Lloyd Baum. Is that his name? Frank let Lloyd it out. Just that. let it out. Damn, damn. it. <laughs> Is that good? Is that, Is that his name? name? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. L. Frank Baum. Yeah, L. Frank Baum. Um, <laughs> Frank Lloyd yeah, Wright. We, <laughs> head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. WebDM is also on Twitch with three weekly games, which we upload to WebDM Plays, our second YouTube channel. Yeah. Well, now I have a whole new noise uh, for that, for Monk, because now he does this thing in his age where he rakes his tongue over the roof of his mouth, so it just kind of sounds like Velcro, like... And when I hear that noise, a timer starts in my head, and I have 10 to 15 seconds to get him somewhere because he's going to throw <laughs> up. That, that's just the noise he makes now.